So, um, oh my goodness, it's coming quite clear today that we're just uh, data management babies, I guess. Um, so, here's, here's for something completely different. Um, so, I'm Claire Sang. I'm the archivist for about 40 archaeologists and archaeological scientists. And um, we create lots of data. Um, how do I put the slides on? Sorry. Uh, just put things there. Okay, like so, and then. There we go. Um, metaphorically, this is how we were dealing with our data. And this represents what archiving felt like. Um, and the picture is apt because um, it was the repairs, uh, the amount of data created during the repairs to Silby that was the crunch point for us. <laughs> Sorry? Uh, no, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure why. I'm sure there's a really good reason. Um, so anyway, we were managing uh, our data by describing what we should be doing in the project design. And this, in this, I've tried to show how the data isn't... Uh, all the things you should be considering are spread out and uh, not all in, in, uh, covered. And we found that then that led to generalised comments. We identified that the barriers to uh, data management were the usual in time resources, that our researchers had various uh, varied skills and experience in data management and willingness to engage. Um, the changes and, and additional tasks were considered uh, threatening bureaucracy. But although there was good management of physical archives embedded in mature working practices, and that was less so for digital, and just one last piece of background is that we manage our projects using following this guide, the MORPH. Um, and this stage approach is how our researchers work. Uh, work. And this stage of approach is what works for the physical archive. So we identified that this is the stage approach that was missing from digital data. So we undertook a project we called ADAPT. Um, it was a big audit of the data we were creating, um, what we were up to in-house, and a best practice externally. Um, and this led to the development of procedures, a toolkit, and a training program. So the aims of the ADAPT were that data management was continuous and efficient, and archiving was uh, done regularly, and that data was just better, <laughs> and we had a lot less of it. Um, and so, to summarise those procedures, oh, uh, uh, the, well, sorry, this summarises the procedures, and what does this mean for our data uh, for our researchers? Well, most of the tasks that they were doing, we identified, were just daily tasks. Um, most of the data management tasks they needed to do were just daily tasks they were doing already, met met metadata being the exception. And uh, to counteract resistance to this, we used, uh, in training, we promoted a do-it-once, do-it-right philosophy. The toolkit supports the uh, supports the procedures, and this is aimed at overcoming skills gaps, standardising file creation, and documenting decisions. You'll be unsurprised that the data management plan is. Uh, we found the data management plan crucial, and um, you can see it's heavily based on the DCC checklist. Um, but uh, it's, less con it's, it's more condensed. <laughs> we identified our uh, audience, and so it's less threatening. And um, we identified repetitive actions and reduced focus on these. Um, and built, uh, gave, uh, our, uh, gave staff standardized text within it to, um, uh, to build upon. Um, so these are the areas in a data management plan. And these areas, is, the areas in bold are the ones that we identified we could create tools uh, to help assist our researchers. So, um, yeah. right, so, brief, right, okay. So, the um, DTT under, in data collections asked us to consider these. And some of them are obviously answered by consideration and planning. But for those in bold, the toolkit has some of the answers. Because we identified that we could create tools that meant our researchers didn't have to reinvent the wheel. So quickly run through some of them. So we documented all our file format decisions, the creation format and the preservation format. And that remains a live document. Um, we have a file naming convention that everyone's supposed to stick to that links the ob data object to the project. It's descriptive of the contents and it helps support version control. 
And then we also have a standardized folder structure. And this uses familiar, uh, familiar terminology and structure that is in that morph guidance. And um, this is recreated from a template for each project, although it is adaptable. <laughs> and um, it has uh, shortcuts to the procedures and tools at the top. Um, uh, no excuses. <laughs> so, uh, these are the hows and whys of what uh, we expect to consider for, data man uh, for documentation and metadata. And in answer to that, we have a metadata library. Um, one from that, uh, th that standard folder structure, you can access the um, your metadata forms that you need to be uh, to be using, and then, um, but the, uh, and then on top of that, you also can link to the metadata library, which is where we store exempl exemplar copies of metadata. So, and here we have a, an example, one of mine I've created. So, uh, there's no archaeo geeks in the office uh, in the in the um, room, but uh, um, here's our 1977 recording manual made into an ADS metadata template that we've used extensively for backlog archiving. Um, and then there's selection and preservation. Again, I'm sure you know all this, um, the hows and the whys, and we. And this is even more project dependent, of course, and needs more planning and consideration, but we also have an evaluation decision tree and a selection and appraisal criteria to assist our researchers and help them make those decisions. All right, so we identified, as undertaking ADAPT, we identified that efficiency was, in key, uh, efficiency was key to engaging researchers, and we designed the toolkit around this to help this, but it was really also important that we were seen to be making things as efficient as possible, because it, it shows that we were uh, uh, trying to uh, provide support. Um, we've out found that the positive outcomes of, of better data management has encouraged adherence and standardization has, um, so need to fill in metadata is encouraged standardization of data, because no one could be bothered to do anything more than once. And then, um, and then we've mapped it to our project stages, and this is established uh, a, a sort of quickly embedded data management tasks in a, an established way of working. And um, I'm quite aware that all this is quite passive. Um, in the, I suppose in this case study, um, the archives team probably sits in a role of which I've very, very recently learned is probably the data steward. <laughs> um, and we have a role in ensuring a currency and providing support. Um, and so, in some respects, our researchers are quite heavily supported. Um, and then, just one final thing is this, the staged approach to archiving, and therefore the sectioning of data, uh, the archive into uh, data. It, uh, that leads to the in, the, in the project folder, you section the data into project stages as well. This allows the archives team as uh, uh, data stewards to regularly identify issues arising and work out appropriate ways of resolving them. Thank you very much. Okay, we have one minute left. Cool. Questions? <laughs> Any questions from the floor? <laughs> Before the seat. Yes, but uh, we had also had, because we, uh, so yeah, um, uh, so yes, <laughs> and that's why all those tools were designed uh, to be as efficient as possible, and so we could repeat, like, you're just doing this already, and even with the metadata, because I identified the metadata was a new thing to do, even with the metadata, they are doing that, it's just embedded in their report, all those things are embedded in methodologies, and, and so they've got to pull that out again. Um, you've got to pull it out again, but then we say, well, we've got now, you've got a metadata template for that, put it in the library, and you can reuse that. So, we, there is resistance, uh, we have a lot of support from uh, middle management to do this, and again, um, making it along with the, uh, making it go along with the uh, project stages has worked, but what we also have is me, the archivist, going in and doing it. So you can see, like in the data management plan isn't filled in, there's, you can see that that basically represents resistance, like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna create any data, it's like, but we also have, back to the um, project design, I can sit there, so I, get, so I sort of review that, and I sit there and look through the project design and what they're gonna do and say, no, that's not what you're gonna do. 
let's put it in. So they're heavily managed, and so we'll, uh, we're looking for long-term cultural change, I suppose. So. Thank you very much. Okay.